What's going on everyone, Desktops Gaming here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna dive into something that I thought was pretty neat, sent over from EZDIYFab here. Uh, something to expand some storage with. So let's dive into it. So welcome back. I uh, appreciate you guys stopping by today. Today we're gonna be taking a look at this little guy sent over from Easy DIY Fab. We're going to start unboxing it here where you guys can see some close ups. Uh, we're going to be using this to expand a little bit in the main rig here. It's an M.2 adapter. Uh, so, what this actually does is fit an M.2 drive into a by 16 PCIe slot. So, as you guys can see here, the M.2 would mount here on the front. If you screw it down like it normally would on your motherboard, and this would be inserted into a by 16 slot onto your motherboard itself. Now this only does support M.2 uh, SSDs, no SATA SSDs uh, supported on these here. And actually does mention that on the bottom of the PCB here. Uh, but basically like you would any other M.2 going right onto your motherboard, it would just slot in here. And of course be screwed down there. Now what else is included in the kit? We do have some thermal pads looks like and a little heat sink that goes on top as well as a tiny screwdriver to help you put the little screw down and looks like some rubber bands here uh, to help hold the little heat sink and thermal pads on just in case uh, you know, you're know you getting some thermal throttling or anything going on because of thermals inside of your case. That's definitely nice to include. It does have a little instruction manual here uh, listing everything. Uh, but today I figured we'd go over installing it here. Uh, where would this come in handy? Uh, in, in the case of my motherboard, I have a B550 Orish Pro as my main motherboard in here. It only has two M.2 slots, uh, one that is Gen 4 connected straight to the CPU, and the one below that to the chipset, that one is just Gen 3. Now this only works uh, for Gen 3, but that's fine because this drive actually here I have from Kingston is just a Gen 3 drive. Uh, so it wouldn't work in the case of if you want a Gen 4 speeds, but if you're wanting to you know, add some extra storage to Gen 3 you have, and you say you're out of M.2 slots on your motherboard, this is a pretty good way to do that especially if you don't still need that slot on your motherboard. All right, uh, so let's go and dive into installing this guy. We're gonna do some tests. I may end up putting the Kingston drive here as part of my main drive, because I believe this does have an OS on it already. And then we'll put it into the top slot on my motherboard. Then we'll go and install uh, Crystal Dust Mark and then get some benchmarks of read write speeds onto the sky. This isn't a super fast drive, but just get a baseline of what it would do, say through the top slot of the motherboard, the one connected directly to the CPU, and then we'll install it onto here and then get some benchmarks of what it would run off the PCIe slot. So let's go ahead and dive into installing this now. So as I said before, we went ahead and put the drive in the top slot there, just pulled the main drive I had out. Like I said, I had a silicon power drive in there before, have the Kingston drive installed in there now. Like I said, this system already had two drives in it. I did have a silicon power one there, and then I had a one from Patriot underneath the little GPU there, if it will focus on it. And the one from Patriot Viper installed there. So I had both M.2 slots already taken. Now, obviously the goal of this, I just wanted to test the speed difference between installing it to a main slot versus at a PCIe slot. Probably gonna put it in the bottom slot there. Uh, but wanted to run some Crystal Disk Mark here uh, with it in the top slot and then move it to see what happens. So we went ahead and have Crystal Disk Mark pulled up here. So we'll do a three test at one gig and we'll do all and just see what kind of results we get here. All right, so as you can see, it's not the fastest drive in the world there. We're getting a little over two gig read there. Like I said, this is just a Gen 3 drive. Uh, this adapter would be better for Gen 3 drives. It doesn't really support Gen 4, uh, but it will support Gen 3 uh, M.2 drive non-SATA. So I get M.2 is non-SATA. All right, we'll go ahead and let the test finish here and see what we get after consecutive read writes. And then we'll compare after we move it. You can see we took some hits there after consecutive read writes, or consecutive reads. Once in the writes are about to start here in just a sec. Being at about uh, half capacity, this would be a little more indicative of uh, a real drive in day-to-day -day use, not uh, one you just set up, just put windows on. Uh, if you guys give a little uh, background on how NAND flash works, uh, it actually constantly moves uh, what you have stored on it around its different flash chips. Uh, so the more data you have stored, uh, like I said, the more time that can eat up transferring that around because it never wants to keep it saved to the same NAND. It actually mo copies it, moves it to a different NAND pretty quickly, over and over again. This test is just about wrapping up here. Uh, like I said, you can see we can get a snapshot here of the read-write speeds we were achieving. 
Uh, like I said, not the fastest drive in the world, but like I said, I, this was previously in one of my little home theater PC setup, so didn't need anything crazy fast in there. Wasn't using it a whole lot of read and write back and forth is mainly just a, uh, a storage device on something that was pretty small. All right, so let's go ahead and get it moved over to the adapter and then we will uh, break down and see what this test does once it's in the adapter. Gone and moved it out of the top slot now. Let's go ahead and get it installed into its PCIe casing here. So like I said, pretty easy to work with. Like I said, you just have this little PCB here that's a uh, by 16 on the bottom here. Like I said, and it works like any other M.2 would. It'll just take a little screw out here and provide a little screwdriver in the kit for you. Take that out. And then to give it some thermal insulation, let's go ahead and put these little pads on here, which, you know, this drive is not super fast, contiguous read or write, so I don't expect it to be too bad, but just to give it good insulation, it was under a heat sink when we did the main test, so we can go and apply one to this one too. Move the sil uh, silicon power one out of the way. And then we'll put this guy on here, like so. And then put a little heat sink here on the top, which is the thermal pad and the heat sink, where it's sitting about like that. And then I include these little bands here to help hold it in place. So we're going to stretch these on. All right. Now that we had it suited up with its heat sink, we can go ahead and install it into the PCB. All right, now we've got it all suited up here, installed in the PCB. We'll go and put it in the uh, bottom slot here and see what kind of speeds we get. Now we have it installed into the PCI adapter there. Just have it clipped in to the bottom there. Let's go ahead and run the same tests we did on Crystal Dust Mark earlier. Three gig, or three test, one gig, run all, and see what kind of speeds we get. As you can do, see, we did take a little bit of a hit there, uh, considering like, so we went from the top slot down to a Pretty much by eighth lane um, but like i said not still not a terrible hit considering that it's in an adapter not an actual m.2 slot especially if you're just using the say for mass storage i'd say overall that's pretty good we'll compare them all when they're done all right let's go ahead and pull up the uh, take a little screenshot here of the first one and we can go ahead and compare them kind of side by side as you can see we did take a little bit of a hit here uh going from the initial read speed of each starting one. Like I said, the writes looks like they actually improved on that first test. Second test, like I said, they were pretty much indistinguishable. Now granted, the write speed to drop a good bit in that random test. Coming down to the third one here, like I said, to take a little bit of a hit. Uh, and read, write speed was about the same. And then on the last test here, uh, we performed a little bit better in write than we did read, and then read took a small dip. Uh, so this is still a Gen 3 drive. Um, so, I mean, it's, you know, we did have it in the top slot, the one closest to the CPU, and one actually connected the CPU instead of the chipset, and obviously the one at the bottom would be going through PCIe, which would, at, at, at where, it's in, where it's installed on the motherboard, would be on the chipset. So I would say, not too bad, not a bad way to expand your storage, you know, unless you are running super high speed drives. Hope you guys enjoyed the little test there of this little PCIe adapter here from EasyDOI Fab. I think for something that comes in around 15, 16 bucks, it's not a bad way to expand your storage. Now, granted, it's not going to support uh, the most or, you know, fast drives out there, your Gen 4 drives, you probably want to reserve those for your faster M.2 slots built into your motherboard. But in the case of you know, wanting to expand storage without having to run hard drives or SATA or any extra cabling or anything like that, uh, if you have extra by 16 slots that you're not using for, say, GPUs or capture cards, this would be a pretty good way to upgrade your storage. Now, granted, there are some ways out there, uh, you know, there are some crazy RAID setups. I'm sure you've seen some. Uh, checked out some from Gear Seekers. They've done a couple on that... Uh, crazy thing from Oris that fits like, you know, four to eight looking uh, M.2s uh, they're at crazy speeds. Now this is not gonna top that, but I think for something again, that's gonna run you about 15 bucks and you wanna expand your storage without having to go with SATA uh, drives or hard drives, anything like that. And you still would take advantage of this M.2. Uh, this is definitely a great way to do it. And again, so long as you're regulating, you know, you say your top slot there for your faster drives and then kind of add the slower, more bulk storage to something like this. So definitely uh, gonna be keeping this in the setup and expanding this drive out. Like I said, I'm not gonna be using this one in my HDPC anymore. Uh, so it might end up wiping this off and using it for a scratch drive or something like that. But uh, if you guys have any questions about this little setup, let me know in the comments down below. Appreciate you guys for stopping by the channel today. Definitely check out our Instagram over at Desktops Gaming if you guys wanna see any more of our builds. We got some more builds coming up as well as some giveaways planned. So definitely stay tuned for that. And if you have any other questions about this guy, like I said, drop a comment down below and let me know. But anyway, appreciate you guys stopping by today. Take it easy.